Son of God before the throne, seated at the right hand of God. Michael and the archangels. Souls under the altar begin to sound. Dead in Christ raised first. Those alive with Christ. 144,000 virgins. Jesus on a white horse with followers. Jesus and his army. Jesus comes on clouds of power and great glory in that he comes surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. Promoting the priesthood of all believers was done for the same unrighteous reason as promoting the doctrine of faith only. They were both taught merely as a means of destroying the hold and authority the church and its priests had over people. You are saved by grace through having faith in Jesus and not in the works of others or yourself. As previously mentioned, the only way to fully appreciate the context in which this is meant to be understood is to realize that there is a difference between works of love and works of law. It definitely should not be understood in the context that Protestants present it, in which it is that you need faith only, thereby negating the need for having any kind of visible church or works. You don't need the church. It is faith only was the battle cry of the first Protestants. When Jesus said he could call down twelve legions of angels, he was saying that he could use just half of the word of God and still defeat them and build his kingdom if it was the right time for the kingdom to come. The earth, mankind, formed man from the dust of the earth, was formless and void. Let us make man into our own image and likeness, so he has true form and can be useful by giving him the breath of life, the Spirit of God. If works proves you're saved, then they are necessary for your salvation, because without them, it shows you're not saved. When the Bible says Jesus healed two blind men, it was referring to the Jews and the Gentiles. Therefore, do not continue to tell people any longer that it was two individual men that he physically healed. Blessed is he who keeps his divinity. Don't lose your salvation by becoming a Protestant. God created man in his own image is of course not referring to the flesh since God is spirit. But it can't really be referring to creating spirit either in keeping with the thought that spirit isn't created but is begotten. But then how do I reconcile 
that with what I taught earlier, which is that image is spirit and likeness is holy. So that to make man in his image and likeness meant to give him a holy spirit. I do it by realizing that the Bible is trying to get across more than one point with the same verses and that the use of the word created is referring to something else which is creating a place of honor for man to share in God's rulership. The Church of the Saints is the Catholic Church, which is why they have saints. The Protestant Church is not the Church of the Saints, which is why they generally have no saints. Why do Protestants teach eternal salvation? They originally made up this false doctrine because they knew that if they told people that they would lose their salvation if they quit the Catholic Church, no one would ever become a Protestant. Telling people that they didn't have to worry about losing their salvation and going to hell if they turned their back on the Church made it easier to overcome their objections about leaving the church. It had very little to do with giving people assurance if they happened to fall into sin after being saved, which, by the way, is what Protestants do when they protest the church. Forsaking the church is one of the worst sins a believer can commit, which is why they should no longer be counted as a true believer. Promoting faith only destroys the church. You don't really need the church to be saved since you only need faith. Promoting priesthood of all believers destroys the church. You don't really need the church and its ordained priests to do the sacraments since we are all priests. Promoting once saved, always saved destroys the church. You don't really need the church once you're saved since you can't lose your salvation. Are you starting to see the pattern behind these false doctrines and what they were originally intended for? Protestants began promoting these three false doctrines in order to get people to leave the one true church and join their false church. They did this to weaken the Catholic Church and its dominion it was gaining over the whole world at the expense of the secular monarchs who were really the ones behind the promotion of Protestantism. Their plan was rather diabolical, if you think about it, since it was really the spirit of demons speaking these doctrines when these doctrines were first taught, whose only purpose was to retain power for themselves and their masters. This is why you must be on your guard at all times, so you don't lose your place among the blessed by fighting for the wrong side.